The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the October 14th, the magical Monday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I am absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I am here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on it at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question, but you can't dial in, Stevie has got your back. Send me an email. Send that off to steve at tfnn.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. And, of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on magical, magnificent Monday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. We begin our day with mostly all the U.S. indices and mostly all the sectors in the S&P 500 trading to the upside. Dow's up 72 points right now, about two tenths of a percent, half percent for the S&P or 32 points, half percent for the Nasdaq 100, 110 points there, quarter percent or six points for the Russell, one and three tenths for the semis. But Tranny's just went positive. Now we've got well, almost there. We almost had all the U.S. indices trading the upside. What's not trading to the downside or upside is gold and silver. Light sweet crude, natural gas, a 30-year treasury. You got gold down 14 bucks, silver 40 pennies, natural gas off 10 cents, light sweet crude back a buck 23, 30-year treasury up off 21 ticks, print out 119.23. Now our leaders in the clubhouse to the upside, Asimil Holdings up 24 bucks, nearly 3%. KLA Corp, 2.5%, 3%, nearly 3%. $21 move there. Longboard Pharmaceuticals, $20, bucks, 51%. Coinbase, $15, bucks, 9%. Penumbra Inc. up $13. Bucks. That's a 6% move. Our shakers to the downside, led by CrowdStrike off about 8 bucks. Really, it's just, uh, I don't even know how to pronounce this. Beijing Limited. I know that's not how you pronounce it, but it's off 13 bucks. Caterpillar's down 7 John Deere's down 6 And Netflix is off 6 bucks as well. So we got movers and we've got shakers. Let's begin our day by taking a look at New York Stock Exchange. Advanced decline oscillator. See where it's trading. It is still below the zero threshold level. And if you look at the bottom panel, spot VIX still above the 50-day exponential moving average. But markets are moving higher. Right. This is these are these are indicators that would suggest that, hey, at best case, we start moving sideways out there. But we haven't moving sideways. As you look at the top panel of the charts, looking at the New York Stock Exchange, we've been moving higher. We are at a new. All time high today or very close to it. I think we are a new all time high today inside the advanced decline line out there. So that says, hey, you know, this rally is real out there. And it is most certainly real. If we take a look at now, I've just got the ES mini right now, but I can put up the other charts here momentarily. Let me see where, as soon as I can find it. But just take a look at the ES mini price in the five major currencies out of the Chinese one. You can see it's approaching its all time high, but certainly trading higher. We made a new all time high today in uh, the U U.S. dollar. I don't have all these now back up at the highs, but you can see new all time high today in pounds trading higher in yen. New all time high today in euros out there. So there is a global rally that's going on. There is global capital that is certainly flowing into the U.S. markets out there. Let me see what other international multi time frame here's the s p that's a three time frame now nah, it didn't really want that just yet um 
Here's the Dow price and other currencies. Now you got to see the, again, I haven't updated this chart, but you can see we're new all time highs today in dollars and euros. Getting close in terms of yen, Australian dollars, new all time high, Swedish Corona, new all time high, Great British Pound, all time high, Swiss Franc, all time high, Chinese Yuan in the S&P 500, really close to an all time high, and the Canadian is struggling a little bit. We have a international rally. If you're wondering why is it that the S&P 500 is moving higher, it is because these are all buyers out there. Very hard to find any sellers we take a look across the globe when we take a look at what traders are looking at on their pages, on their screens out there. Mm, what else does Stevie have? Well, let's go take a look at that. Uh, uh, that's for the Dow. It's going to look at the horizontal trading range charts out here. I think I have them, PTR, horizontal trading range. This is for the S&P. Uh, no, no, shoot, this is, this is not. This is going to be for the 10-year uh, a uh, note out there, so I'm not going to get that there. Um, here's the S and P file. Here's the S and P. If we take a look at what's going on over in the Middle East, what do we got out here? S and P is at new all time highs today. Um, really across the board, yeah, all across the board. So, folks, I just want you to truly understand what we're looking at. We take a look at these charts. are showing us that you've got global capital flow from all of these countries into the U.S. The U.S. is the safe haven out there. I know maybe some people find that hard to believe. But when we take a look at the, spot, the stock charts, that's what they are showing us. Okay, so enough of these charts out here. Let's go take a look at what's going on intraday, if you will. And we'll start with the ES Mini. So we're going to change screens. Give me a moment here. We'll get over to the... Uh, proper set of screens out here we'll take a look at those eight panel charts and in the upper left you've got the uh, daily uh, chart here for the uh, es mini you can see that we are in a wave number seven uh, signal out here so what that says is that we could get it needs to be a lower high uh, that uh, would confirm that pattern we are in a consolidation breakout if we just take that consolidation now and move that up just a tad come on move that up to about right there you can see we're getting close to where you could get a short-term top out there. And any kind of short-term top on a daily time frame, the first key level of support at this point in time would be that daily oscillator unchanged line. We take a look at a five-hour time frame chart. No topping signal there. Four-hour time frame chart, the bar that we're in completes at 2 p.m. That will become bar number eight. So by day's end, by the session, you could get a T9 count top for that four-hour time frame. Nothing on the two-hour chart. Nothing... Um, I say nothing. You have a TD9 count top on the 60-minute time frame. What would negate that would be a 60-minute close above 58.98.75. To the downside, what price should do is explore that oscillator and change line. Currently printed about 58.82. No topping signal, although I'm sure there's an A to B equal CD pattern to the upside for the 30-minute time frame chart. So we can see that, several different ones. So there is a sell the D point pattern. With price right now on a 30-minute basis testing profile support. Now, the profile support, that was a bullish structured profile. Price got down to the bottom of it, 58.88.95. The actual touch point out here, the low, was 58.88.75. And that's perfect uh, because you can't get to 95. So, uh, so it really hit that uh, bottom of that profile perfectly. Bullish structure. We're trading above the center. We're trading above its green oscillator and change line. The ES Mini is telling us for the 30-minute time frame, it's headed back to that 59.03.75. You close above that, the 30-minute chart says up, up, and away. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. 
Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters Letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. All the U.S. indices are now trading to the upside. We're taking a look at the charts here for the NQ, by the way, inside the ES Mini. There were no other real top. All the, Any of the intraday topping signals each found support um, on a retracement and have started uh, trading higher. If we take a look at the NQ charts out here, I'd pay attention to the 60-minute. The 60-minute completed a TD9 count top. It did that at 11, a uh, 1030, I believe, right? I mean, 1030, 10 o'clock. No, 11 o'clock. Did it at 11 o'clock out there. And then while we were, while Stevie was jabbering out here, price pulled back, test and rejected that green oscillator and change line. Green oscillator and change line tells us the price oscillator is above zero. That's a bullish condition. And when we have price trade above a green oscillator and change line, tells us we have a rising price oscillator above zero. And that most certainly is a bullish condition. When price pulls back and tests and rejects that level, that is a bullish signal. Now, overall for the 60 minute time frame, it's neutral because you still do have that top in place, but it has uh, accomplished its task, which was testing support out there. So I'd watch that 22. 532 ish area on the NQ for the 60 minute time frame. If we were to close below that, we'd be looking at a move back towards 2411. We've got a number of requests that have come in, so why don't we get to those out there so I don't fall too far behind? The first one coming in several days ago, obviously, and that was from Ant, well, not obviously, but it did come in several days ago. Glad to be back with you. Uh, live on the air. Um, if we take a look at Intel, and this is what Ann was looking at, question was thoughts of direction. So one of the first things we take a look at, we took a look at a quick consolidation, small Ooh. consolidation on the daily ES mini. This top uh, little uh, rectangle that you can see, that was the consolidation pattern inside of Intel for a monthly time frame. Once price closed below that, which was really closing below its TD9 count bottom, price went ahead and made that full consolidation move to the downside. So on a monthly time frame, although we don't have a bottom signal, there's no A to B equals CD pattern, there's no nothing. Well, there is that consolidation measured move. So we do have a bottom inside of Intel 
for a monthly time frame. On a weekly time frame, we have profile change in trend. It did form a roads momentum indicator signal, never generated the bullish reversal candle. That doesn't matter because price did close above the top of its profile on a weekly basis, which was 22.50. Did it for more than two consecutive sessions out there. That suggests that price should move higher. If we take a look at the daily time frame, the daily time frame on Friday did test and reject a swing point. That was a swing point from out here on September 27th. That swing had 85 million shares. Price did get into it on Friday, but with 43 million shares. So you do have a test and rejection of a swing point. Now here, as I mentioned to Ann this morning, if price does close above 2337 today, that would be two consecutive close above the top of its daily profile, even though it's trading with light volume. And that would suggest to Stevie at least a test of that swing high. That swing high for the trading day of September 27 is at 2466. You close above 2466, you will trigger an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside out there with regard to the daily charts for Intel. So as I mentioned to Ann, everything here looks good. What happens if price closes back inside the daily profile that would be a close below 2337 well that would easily bring into play the 2261 to 2294 level it's not a sell it just would be a consolidation with inside its profile with support of 2207 resistance at the top which i think is at 2337 out there we're trading 2338 right now so and thanks so much for waiting and uh, if you've got any other questions, please get back to me. Hector and Patty wrote in, and they'd like to take a look at Caterpillar, primarily looking for support and resistance level to start with the monthly time frame. Monthly time frame is an all-out bullish breakout mode. It's trading above profile resistance. It's trading above its oscillator and change line. There is no other resistance that I see out here on a monthly. Well, let me just open up this chart out here. Just let me see what I see. Yeah, I don't see any other monthly resistance or anything along these lines out here. So it looks like it just simply wants to continue motor on to the upside. If you look at that weekly time frame chart, it's uh, triggered a rose momentum indicator top. It does have, let me just see here. This is really, so it's wave seven, but let me pull this back here. Yeah. Nah, I'm not going to argue that it's wave number seven out there. That's not letter G. I, I don't really think so. But look, it's got a road momentum indicator signal straight above all resistance. By the way, your support level here, Hector and Patty, would be its oscillator and change out of 379 or so. This is looking to Stevie like it wants to continue to rally. We just have an inside bar at this moment in time. It's only Monday, though. And on the daily time frame out here, we had a TD9 count top. That was negated on Friday. That suggests a further move to the upside. Now, support is going to be at 377.92. That's its TD9 count breakout level. Or below that, 375.65. Or below that, between 364 and 368 out there. A resistance right now, Hector and Patty, is going to be that green oscillator and change line. And that's at 399. If price were to close above that, we continue to motor on. So everything looks hunky-dory out there. There's your support and resistance levels to the extent that I could provide them. Hope that gave the information you were looking for. If not, write back to me. We'll make sure that we get it. GTE wrote in earlier and wants to take a look at XPEV. XPEV consolidating with inside that profile. you got a TD9 count top. It's got a bullish structured profile. The buy zone between 1147 and 1191. The resistance level is at 1323. On a weekly time frame, you are going to uh, likely form bar number eight, but it's not a TD9 count topping signal. You have to at least tick above the high. That's the high from two weeks ago out there. In other words, price would need to tick above 1373 in order to trigger that count. So I kind of consider that count somewhat irrelevant. What I would not consider irrelevant is a close below 1147, the bottom of that daily profile. If in fact, that's what unfolds out here, that on a weekly basis, price should target a Sassler and change line, currently printing at $9.00. And 70 cents. Monthly time frame uh, closed above profile last month as long as it remains above that, closes above that on a monthly basis. And that being that being the price point of 1143, you have a profile change in trend suggesting higher price. So hope that helped you out with that. Let's go take a Mr. Bill's request, which was to take a look at ticker symbol MSTR. So let's get those charts up on the uh, screen here. And I believe it was just a general overview. If I'm not mistaken, this is MicroStrategy. MicroStrategy has had some nice moves out there. Uh, do we have any kind of daily topping signal? And the answer to that is, well, let me just pull this back. Let's see. I see a wave seven signal, but where did that start? All the way back. Down. No, it does not. So I do not see 
I, I do not see a topping pattern or signal just yet. However, it is a wave number six. That much for sure. That's the letter F that is on our screen out there. But so that top is not is not in place here. Don't know when that could or would form. So the daily time frame for uh, micro strategy, Mr. Bill, is all out bullish. Support down at 194.34, the top of that daily profile on a weekly basis. We've got roads mentioned indicator signals uh, triggered, but those need bearish reversal candles. You negated a TD9 count top last week. This looks muy bueno. You're trading above all resistance. The rally should continue. And on a monthly time frame, price above its green oscillator and change line above the top of its profile. Looks like it wants to head higher. Uh, if we take a look at this, yeah, this is a looks good looking uh, chart out here as we take a look at it right now for its daily, weekly, and monthly time frames, Mr. Bill. On a 30-minute time frame, I'm just looking off screen. I don't see any kind of a topping signal out there. So it looks like the rally should continue for MSTR. Steve Rhodes with TFN. We come back from this break. We're going to take a look at Chipotle for Dan. I believe it's Bank of America for ELO, LLOLPX for Rose, and TPIC. We'll be right back. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels. You'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns. You'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry October 11th and 25th for more live trading action. Your purchase goes towards two sessions, so make sure to sign up now so you don't miss a chance to sit next to Larry as he trades the market live. For all information and to reserve your spot today, go to the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Trader's Edge is brought to you by Direction's Daily Leveraged and Inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. 
Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, folks. Let's go on to our next request out here. This is for Chipotle for Dan inside the Tiger's Den. Um, I forget your questions, Dan, so I'm just simply going to go take a look at the daily charts report on what we see out here. So on a daily time frame, uh, I do not see a topping pattern. We are trading above profile resistance. We closed above it on Friday, 58.56. The second close above that is going to suggest that we move higher. We take a look at the weekly time frame chart. We are also trading above profile resistance and a screen oscillation change line. Those are both at about the same level of 58.62. As long as that condition remains, price should continue to move higher. If you look at the monthly time frame, price is trading with inside its profile, but above its green oscillator and change line at the moment. Dan, that suggests a move up to its sell zone, the sell zone 61.68 to 64.21. Do I see anything else out here with regard to Chipotle? And the answer is, I mean, I see A to B equals CD patterns. Uh, the B point out here for one of them would be the high from September 26. So that high out there had 10.3 million shares out there. Uh, we're trying to take that on today. So far in the first two hours of trading, about uh, less than 2 million shares. So definitely moving higher with light volume still doesn't matter. You close above. That uh, daily profile resists at 58.56. You're going to continue. You should continue to move higher because each of the charts, daily, weekly, and monthly, are in bullish mode configuration as we speak right now. So that's what I see in Chipotle. Let's take a quick peek here at an intraday chart since that was pretty easy. 60 minute. Well, we didn't want a 60 minute chart, anyways. Uh, what we do want is let's take a look at the 30 minute. 65 is what I would use. So the 30 minute chart, don't pay attention to the oscillator and change line here, Dan. Did form a Rhodes Mentum indicator top. Let's actually change that oscillator and change line. Otherwise, I can't really give you a, a great uh, read. So let's change that from uh, 65 to 30. And now we take a look at it. So you've got resist. So you've got a Rhodes Mentum indicator top. Price still trade above support, which would be at 58.51. But it is trading below its green oscillator and change line. So that's your resistance level right now, Dan, at about 59.07. If you close above that, you likely go back and target the early morning high out there. So that's what I see with regard to Chipotle, and you are most welcome. ELO inside the Tiger's Den wanted to take a look at Bank of America. BAC is its ticker symbol. Let's go take a look at its set of charts out here. And on a daily time frame, you're trying to close above the top of its profile out there, daily profile, at about – it's a very structured profile. So you actually – Actually, did we close up? Well, first of all, what is it? 41.96. On Friday, we closed at 41.95. One penny. But if we do close two days above 41.96, we ought to at least make a move ELO to the 42.87 level. That's a daily TD9 count breakdown level out there. You close above that, you head back to its highs. On a weekly time frame, price closed above its green, it's traded above its green oscillator and change line, traded above the top of its profile. It's in bullish mode out there. And finally, we take a look at the monthly time frame chart. The monthly time frame chart on Bank of America did form a TD9 count pattern out there. And what it did, though, is on that pattern, as it was completing bar number nine, it was also testing and rejecting that green oscillator and change line. So it somewhat neutralized its signal. What took place last week was a brand new profile with resists up at 4081, supported 3598. We didn't close, I'm sorry, on a monthly basis. And we're trading above 4081 right now. So bullish condition, in essence, on the monthly because price had a top, tested and held support and is trading higher, so you can go neutral to bullish out there. You are bullish when we take a look at the weekly time frame chart and just watch that little profile. It's a bearish structure profile, as we mentioned, on the daily time frame, but things look mighty good with regard to Bank of America. Rose wants to take a look at ticker symbol OLPX. I don't believe I got that in. I did not, so let's go ahead and type this in here. OLP -O -P, not Z. OLPX. Make sure I got that. Yep. So let's go get those charts fired up on our screen. OLPX is is uh, Olaplex Holdings. Okay, there we go. So what do we have out here? First, on a, a monthly time frame, you've got a consolidation with inside a profile, a buck thirty-seven at the support level or bottom, 
and the resistance level up at the top is 244. You'd love to see it close above 244 on a monthly basis. That would then suggest to move up to 507. You do have a road momentum indicator bottom pattern on the monthly chart just to consolidate with inside those profiles. On the uh, weekly time frame, you've got a road momentum indicator bottom. You've got price trading above profile resistance. It's also in change line. Suggests that it wants to trade higher, but watch last week's low. If we do close below that or trade below that, that being 216. If we start trading below 216, we'll head down to the 195 to 204 level. The daily time frame, we're trading with inside its profile. We're trading below Friday's low. Uh, so it could be signaling to you and I that it wants to go target profile support at 210. Below that is TD9 count breakout support at 189. Your resistance on a uh, daily time on a daily time frame for Olaplex Holdings is going to be 233-ish. That's the oscillator and change line above that 240 and above that 262. So what does it want to do? You just got consolidations really on the daily and on the monthly, and the weekly is bullish overall. But still watch last week's low out there. Rose, you had a second request, which is TPIC. So let's punch in those here, TPIC. See what these charts are telling us. TPIC is TPI Composites. We take a look at TPI Composites. It's got a beautiful day today. So let's start again with the monthly time frame chart. Consolidation between 272 at support, 598 as resistance. Weekly time frame chart. Road momentum indicator bottom, price consolidating with inside its current profile, support at 332, resistance at 540. On a daily time frame, you're trading above all resistance levels. It's in full bullish breakout mode. However, let me see, let Stevie open up this set of charts out here. You do have a wave number seven signal. That's that letter G. And uh, and if we and what is required to uh, set that topping pattern would be a lower high. So that earliest that that could take place would be tomorrow uh, afternoon as the market comes to a close. Short of that, prices traded into a TD9 count topping swing point from July 17th. That swing had volume of 800,000 shares. So far in two hours of trading, 300,000 shares. Price is moving into that swing point with volume. If that then suggests that price should at least go target the high. So Stevie would say, Rose, that price should at least go target 526 in the short term. Watch what happens as price gets to that level. If you close above that, that would be a bullish outcome. And do remember, 540 is where your weekly resistance level is at out there. Mr. Z inside the Tiger's Den asked about the ES Mini. Is there any kind of short-term topping signal that we see? Look, on the 10-minute chart, you had a TD9 count, a top that formed, price pulled back and tested support at 58.89.65, which basically is 50 out there. So the work to the downside has been done. You just got a consolidation. On the 15-minute chart, no uh, topping signal. On the 30-minute chart, yeah, we saw a sell the D point, if you will. Price consolidated with inside its bullish structure profile. The weekly has a TD9 count top, support being 58.82. So is there some short-term topping signals? Yes, I think the best one will likely be the 240-minute at day's end. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. In the
the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets, with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds for both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. Uh, we're taking a look at the charts here for Z Scalar. ZS is the uh, ticker symbol. This for yellow inside our Tiger's Den. So as we take a look at the daily time frame chart out here, First thing that we see is that price tested and rejected an SSA. So this had a TD9 count top on the daily time frame. That went ahead and let me just make sure it wasn't taken out. That went ahead and completed on August 21st. The high was 260. Where was this high close? That close was nope. Uh yeah, 198. No, so yeah, so it had a, it still has a TD9 count top that's in place out here and that was actually test really was a swing point high that followed after the uh, td9 count top the august 22nd high which uh, did uh, was a high of 202.64 volume of 1.2 million shares and on friday that high was tested with 2.8 million shares so when you test the swing point with volume now that tested the high and you, you we still closed inside it Make sure. Yeah, we closed inside it. It suggests that a high should get tested again. We have not traded. Well, we are not trading. We if we close below Friday's low, Friday's low, by the way, is at 195.30. I would suggest we we might have one more day of a pullback out here. Uh, there was a sell the D point pattern that could form today. Uh, you can see the A to B out here. That's easy where it had formed the TD9 count top pulls back into a low that forms on October 1st. That's your C point. So this is more than a one to one, maybe a one to two A to B equals CD pattern. But it's requiring a bearish reversal candidate to confirm that top. You could get a dark cloud cover today uh, out here at ELO. And if you do, then price should pull back to 181.35. Still just consolidating with inside its weekly profiles out there, 171.62 to 208.14. And on a monthly basis, we're really doing the same thing, a consolidation between 182.80 and all the way up at the 234.01 level, but really the consolidation high is at the uh, 208.40 level out there. So that's what I see when I take a Z scalar. Now, on a 30 minute time frame, what we have out here was a, or is a TD9 count bottom. Now, if price were to close below that low, 195.66, that suggests lower price. You can see. Then at 194.13, you've got your TD9 count breakout level. So those would be levels to also watch ELO to get a gauge intraday what's going on with regard to Z scalers. So hope that helped you out. As always, thanks so much for your request out there. Now, the next request that came in is from Nicholas. 
And Nicholas was really presenting a question. So what I want to do here, I'm going to try to answer that question as best I can. I want to change my screen. We'll go back to the black background screens. So if you give me a moment, and some of this we sort of already covered. We did already cover, but uh, uh, we're going to have in order to answer the question, um, I'm going to have to really recover again. Here's the question. And the question is, maybe some of you also have that same inclination out there, which is Nicholas is saying, look, Stevie, Israel's getting ready to attack Iran and likely in some large way. Now, I just added that to it. But Israel's getting ready to attack Iran. And in Nicholas's thought process, he's saying these moves higher do not seem reasonable. But just as asking my thought process, and I think that is a great question, and most or many should really have that out there. And so what I would first say is let me go back. We're going to take a look at first just the S&P 500 because that's the easiest set of charts that I can pull out priced in uh, different currencies out here. So this one is – no, that's not the one I wanted to start with because you're really asking about Israel, Iran out there. Now, do I have the Iranian dollar in here? I don't. So I'm going to add that uh, to the set of charts here. But what this is, first take a look at Nicholas. So here's here's what smart money knows. And so smart money knows for certainly there's uh, going to be an attack. This is likely not going to end. It hasn't ended for 5,000 years. I don't know why it would end after this next uh, situation out there. That's a terrible thing. But that's not really the question out there. If you are... In that, If you are over in the Middle East, let's say you're in Kuwait, let's say you're in Egypt, let's say you're in Jordan, let's say you're in Saudi, let's say you're in Syria out there, um, you're in Iraq. Well, what you want to take a look at is what are the traders in those countries telling us out here? Well, if you take a look at it, they're saying that the U.S. is a safe haven. In other words, they want to get their money out of the Middle East, get it out of the war zone out there. Why do they want to get it out of the war zone? Well, first, things could really get out of hand. Uh, right now, someone's question, I, I, you know, I think they're out of hand now, quite frankly. But with regard to whether they're out of hand or not out of hand, what large money is doing is saying, I want my money out of an area where there's war, because that just simply leaves, leads to all kinds of inflation, higher interest rates out there, debasement of currency, all those things. So where is it, I would ask you, Nicholas, if you were a resident of Kuwait, or you were a resident of Egypt, or Syria, or Saudi, where is it that you would park your money? I mean, if you were looking at this set of charts here, knowing that you're also at new all-time highs today in those currencies, well, this is where you would park your money. But it's not just there. We know that we've got a war over in Europe, right? And that could easily get out of hand. Um, you know, if we give the munitions that... Um, that uh, Zelensky is asking for, it'll definitely get out of hand. And here, if we take a look at how is the S&P trading uh, in uh, major currencies out here, so see how this is the S&P, cash in the sea, you can see we're at new all-time highs stay in Europe, we're at new all-time highs stay in Corona, in Australian dollars, in all these currencies, Great British Pound out there. Um, so what we can see out here is from an European standpoint, we do have the DAX that's at new all-time highs. So I'm not discounting that. And there is money that's flowing into the uh, German DAX for sure at this stage here. But money will fly out of the German DAX if World War III truly does start. Now, I don't know whether it has or it hasn't out there. But what I can answer the question to you is what we got to think about and what you say makes sense out there, that how can the markets be heading higher with all this turmoil over there? And that is because money has to park itself somewhere. If you were had your money parked in and one of the large broker dealers, and you're in the wealth management area, they're going to keep all that money, uh, unless you've got some specific request out there, they're going to keep all that money invested all the time. And so it's got to move uh, to, to different places out there. Uh, would you still allocate the same percentage overseas or international markets? Maybe some international markets, but you'd keep them out of Europe for the most part, I would think, and you'd certainly keep them out of the Middle East. So, but your question is very valid. And what I can share with you is even myself, I had the answer that that question over the weekend. The question really was how I presented to myself was what is it that's going to likely identify a high out there or a top? So what I want you to do, and I wasn't really interested in planning that, but since you did ask this question, and I can't really show you those charts right now, only because it have to, it's got a different a data feed and all kinds of things. But here's what I will do. I'm going to do my segment uh, this afternoon at uh, 3.15. I don't know if it will be Tom or if it will be Jacob that will be doing the show. Uh, but what I will do is I will show you what I believe is the uh, one thing that could identify a top 
and it'll be a topic that actually lasts for a couple of years out there. So I'll finish doing my work on that. I'll go ahead and present that uh, during that, that segment out there. So to the extent that you can listen in, Nicholas, at around 3.15, uh, that would then complete my answer to your question, or at least with regard to what is it that we should be looking for that might identify a top out there. So I hope that helps you out. That was a great question. Uh, we do have a couple more of requests that came in. Uh, one from uh, GTE wanted to take a look at ticker symbol EWH. If we take a look at EWH, TD9 count top, price just consolidating with inside its profile levels, testing and rejecting the bottom of its bullish structure profile at 1843. So GTE, you got to watch 1843. You close below that, you head to 1740. Otherwise, you just got a consolidation with resistance up at 1924. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers whether through charts or videos larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets you can sign up now at tfnn.com for just 97 dollars and with all tfnn newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee you have nothing to risk for all the details visit tfnn.com you'll find fibonacci 24 7 right under the newsletters tab are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. My apology, I didn't post those EWH charts. Thank you, Mr. Bill, for letting me know as we were taking a look at them. Uh, just a little brain fart for Stevie. But you can see those charts. You can see the bullish structure daily profile on the left out there. Now, if that level fails at 1843, you can see the TD9 count top on the weekly time frame. And that would check to suggest move back to 1724 to the 1740 level, which was the daily TD9 count breakout area out there. So that's what we see there. If we go take a look at NIO, also another request, if we take a look at this, 
Price is trading below profile, but below the center of its profile. Likely going to go target the 532 to 557 level out there. Out of anything to suggest otherwise, 529 could also be a level of support. If we take a look at our next request out here, just trying to get these in. ADMA for Dude. Dude, you've got uh, a Rogement Dimindicator top on a daily time frame. Price testing a prior profile, prior a profile, a prior swing point back on September 4th. Volume air 2.7 million shares. You got down there with 22 million shares shares out there. You want to watch that low, that low being a 1606. If we close below that, we could head all the way back to 1155. You're trading right now below the weekly profile level of support on Friday. See a price close below 1676. If it does, that suggests to move towards 1021. TD9 count top on the monthly time frame suggests to move back to 1204. So you got a lot of topping action inside of ADMI. Watch that daily time frame first out there. The next request was to take a look at the um, SOXX for Duncan Steve. Duncan, you've got right now bar number seven, price taking out or trying to take out the swing point from September 26. Five million shares there, 5.5 to be exact. You're up today with 1 million shares. You're trading into that swing point with lighter volume. Nonetheless, a close today above 238.38 will trigger an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. If we take a look at the weekly time frame chart, price right now trading above the center of its bear structured profile and its green oscillator and change line. Bullish condition on the monthly time frame. Bullish condition as well. It's trading above all resistance. It does have a TD9 count top, but price found support at that oscillator and change line. So overall, it is neutral. Lastly, with regard to the 30-year treasury, it's going to form bar number nine of a TD9 count pattern today. There's an A to B equals CD out there. If we were to get some type of bullish reversal candle, which by the way, we did get a bullish hammer candle. I just noticed this on Friday. That confirmed a buy the D point pattern out here you got a new profile inside of the 30 year resistance at the uh, 120 10 level folks have a magnificent monday i look forward to seeing you tomorrow take care thanks for joining us